What is up heroes, this is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. In the last episode, did I, did I say blind? I don't think I did. Wow, it's been that long since I've done intros, I forgot to throw a blind at the end there. In the last episode, we talked a lot with Golem, who eventually met his, uh, well, his doom, as he went against the will of Zero Junior, presumably, and was terminated. However, there's been an Ambidex game that's been started, and so we were going to go figure out just what's going on with that matter. So, without further ado, let's hop into it. Actually, one quick announcement, because I talked about it at the end of the last episode, some of you might not have heard it, is that I'm likely going to be doing the three videos a week upload schedule, which is more typical for my channel. Uh, I just don't think I'll be able to do daily uploads anymore, um, or at least for quite some time, so thank you for understanding. All right, let's move on. Right, let's go. Off to the warehouse to see what, just what in the world is going on with this AB game. As I still get, uh, you know, familiar with the game again. But like I said, it, it's been fun recording and I like this new setup. It's the first time in a while I've really had access to a setup where I can just choose whenever I want to record without much consideration of what else could provide noise in the world around me. So it's pretty rare that I've been able to do that in the past. Always had to consider if somebody was mowing the lawn, if I had family at home, or if somebody was going to be getting home from work, or whatever it was. And that's why a lot of times I'd end up you know, recording at 12.30, 1 in the morning, etc. When it was really late and the only guarantee I had was everybody was asleep. But anyways, we pushed through the magenta door and ran into the warehouse. There stood Phi, Dio, and K. Hey! What the heck, guys? Why did you open the AB gate before everyone got back? I apologize. We only turned away for a moment. Dio opened it. Of course it's Dio. Hmm. You got a problem with that? Well, in fact, I do. Of course we do. Why? I don't remember us all promising we wouldn't open up the open the thing until everyone showed up. This isn't about promises. Are you stupid? Or just a jerk? Probably both. <laughs> Alice telling him how it is. We were able to get back here in time, but what about the others? Tenmyoji, Quark, and Clover are still out there somewhere. What were you planning to do if they didn't get back in time? Nothing. Why would I have to do anything? Didn't you hear the voice? Anybody who doesn't get back in time to vote just gets their vote automatically set to ally. Seems pretty straightforward to me. So what if they don't get back in time? Well, somebody from that trio has to vote. Otherwise, there's a punishment. They'll all get set to ally, and all three of them will get two BP. Sounds like a sweet deal to me. Tenmyoji's only got one BP. I figure he'll be pretty happy to get two more. And that'll put Quark and Clover up close to nine, so that's not too bad for them either. In other words, they ought to be thanking me. Oh, yes, of course, Dio. Why don't we all thank you for how considerate you're being of everyone else? Um... Didn't you guys find a note? Huh? What? What is this? We found it in our safe. Read it. Here are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not an option, and if both parties refuse to vote, then everybody gets penalized. In other words, one person of every color group of three has to vote. What the heck, man? This wasn't in our room. Back me up here, guys. He's right. There was no such note in our safe. 
しまいったら。まあ、だん、だいつばむ。このメモに書いてあることを知ってりゃ、ゲートなんて開けることはなかったんだ。I never have opened the gate if I'd known about this. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Dio. <laughs> really? Hon to だと思う。Of course. Hmm. I'm worried about the others. If time runs out, they'll. They'll be penalized, yes. I know. Quark is part of that team. Maybe something happened with him. He seemed a little off before we headed into the chromatic doors. This is bad. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like a good situation. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Alice? She was here just a minute ago. Did Alice crack? Is she struggling with the virus now? It took me only a moment to spot her. She was several yards away and kneeling down to look at something on the floor. What she was looking at, I couldn't tell. I was about to head over and see what was going on when. Of course, the classic interruption to prevent us from learning. Here come Temyoji and Clover. <laughs> Whoa. Hey guys. Quark. Has Quark been here? Did something happen to him? He disappeared. Sorry if you can hear that, that guy's engine on the street outside the apartment. <laughs> disappeared? What do you mean? I mean, he's gone. We can't find him anywhere. When was the last time you saw him? That's right, doesn't he just like bolt as soon as they get outside the door? We were heading back here. Temyoji and I went into the lounge, but Quark didn't follow us. We turned around and started calling for him, but. When he didn't respond, we ran back the way we'd come. And you couldn't find him? Right. We thought maybe he just hadn't seen us go into the lounge. So we checked the crew quarters and the infirmary. But he wasn't there either. Alright. We need to split up. If we can't find him in any of the floor A rooms, we'll move to floor B. Okay. I need to go tell Alice. You guys go on ahead. Right, you do that. So Clover is going to be able to see whatever Alice is looking at, potentially. I think that was different from the last time this event happened in the parallel timeline. I don't remember Alice squatting down and us at least noticing that. Hey! Quark! Quark! Still can't help but think of Captain Quark from the Ratchet and Clank series. I'm trying to remember, where did we find him before? I don't remember. He's not here. And I checked both rooms. He's not in the other two either. There's no one here. Tenyoji and Kei are in the lounge, and Dio and Luna should be checking the infirmary. Right. Okay, let's leave that to them and head to floor B. Sounds good enough so far.
are we gonna find it? You went through the red door with Dio and K, right? Yeah, so? What was on the other side of that door? I remember the pantry, I think, is over there? You wanna see it? Yeah. Maybe Quark went there. Fine. Follow me. But I don't re I don't remember which rooms were behind which doors. Which is a bummer, but not the end of the world. I'm sure it'll come back eventually. Okay, so here's the pantry. I don't remember if this is the only thing behind this door, though. And when we get into the pantry, what do we find? This is... The pantry. Pantry? Can I skip this? No, I can't. Because I remember we've been here before. So, uh, that drawer over there is stuffed with processed food. Wasn't half bad, actually. You ate it? Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of food. Oh, and I ate the chef's pasta too. That's a lot of food. Can't help it. I'm a growing girl. In which direction? Outward? <laughs> How old are you? Twenty, I think. You think? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, just stop. I don't even know where to start here. One, by the time you hit 20, you're done growing. Two, you think? You should be old enough to know how old you are. Three, how on earth are you 20? You look like you're 13 if you're a day. Can't believe you're only two years younger than me. <laughs> now that's funny. You must have done a lot of drugs to look like that at 22. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Fi just putting Sigma on blast. Oh, give me a break, you little punk. Don't call me little. I'm an adult, you dried a baka. Whoa. Intentions rise. Fine, whatever. So this place has enough food to keep people alive for a few years, huh? Looks like this stuff isn't going to expire anytime soon. Yeah, the use by date is about a hundred years from now. Interesting. From now, in from what perspective, right? Because we've talked before that Phi, Sigma, and uh, is it Luna? No, I don't think it's Luna. I think it was Dio, presumably, are from the same time period, right? I think it was like 2028. 20, and this, if the use by date is, you know, by like 21, 28, that would be a hundred years from now, from their perspective, but we know that there are other characters that are from probably further in the future. And this might give us a bit of a hint uh, just how far ahead in the future we are. It's not a thousand years, maybe, but it's on the scale of tens, maybe hundreds of years. How about water? There's a tank over there. It looks like they're pulling it out of some kind of well. Is it safe? <laughs> well, since Dio isn't rolling around on the floor in agonizing pain, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and assume it's okay. You made him drink it to make sure it was safe. I guess you could say that. I'm sure Dio was dying to do it, to drink it himself. So you ate all the food without a second thought. But the water struck you as possibly dangerous. No, I was careful with the food too. <laughs> I had Dio try all of that first. <laughs> That's actually what happened! <laughs> That's actually what happened! Dio had some of it first, and it seemed fine, so I... Oh! I almost forgot! What? I ate something else! Twice cooked pork! Oh, for God's sake! Why the heck are you shouting about that? Wait a minute. Twice cooked pork? What is it? Well, that just reminded me of something. Reminded you of what? This might seem hard to believe at... <laughs> oh, come on, at least let me tell you first. Alright. Why are we getting so worked up about twice cooked pork? I explained how we'd found a room called the Gollum Bay on the other side of the green door, and how we'd met a robot there named Gollum who told a very interesting story.
Okay, why is this relevant to Twice Cooked Pork? I see. So the golem guy was turned off just when he was about to tell you something. Yeah. So the last thing he said was, see, right in the middle of... Yeah. Right in the middle. Middle could be from Middle Kingdom, which is another name for China. Well, this was utterly pointless. Really. I don't think so. Please, explain. Well, maybe he was trying to say that this game is like the Chinese room. In other words... Of course, classic interruption, as we're about to have some sort of development. <laughs> so if this game itself is like the Chinese room, what's coming in and what's going out, right? What are we not understanding but still responding to? I'm not quite certain I see that parallel just yet. Not that I doubt it exists, I just, it hasn't quite clicked with me yet. How does the game work in a way that there's some input we don't understand, but we then respond to? Maybe in the sense that we don't realize how we're receiving memories or premonitions or influences from other timelines, but we're responding to them, even though we don't fully understand them. Maybe, maybe in that sense. Anyways, Luna comes in to interrupt, as is typical for Zero Escape. Sigma, five. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. What's going on? Something bad. Something really bad. Well, come on, spill it. Alice. Alice is... Uh-oh. Just come with me. She's in the crew quarters. Uh-oh. Is she dead? I mean, she obviously didn't look okay when we last saw her. But she didn't look horrible, right? And she was looking at something. What did she find? What did she find? I don't know. Is what she found related to her onset of the virus? Maybe if we played this timeline earlier in our own playthrough, that's what we would have thought. But now, maybe not, right? We know from a previous timeline that this happens regardless of what she finds there. And so, hmm. What? No, this isn't real. All I could hear were Zero's words echoing in my ears. Your heart stops, your bracelet comes off. If you've never been in turbulence, it's hard to explain. You feel the sudden, alien weightlessness of a long fall, and for just a moment you're painfully aware of the fact that you are thousands of feet above the Earth, in a flimsy machine made by fallible men kept aloft by a scientific principle that nobody actually understands. If you've never seen a friend dead, it's hard to explain, but it's a little like that. I knelt down beside Alice's body and pressed a shaking hand to her throat. No pulse. Her skin had already turned pale. The thing in front of me looked like a human being, but it wasn't being a human any longer. Why had this happened? I knelt there for several long moments, staring blankly ahead. My throat burned and my chest was tight, but I forced myself to take three progressively calmer breaths, then stood. I clenched my fist, took one last breath, and turned. Who found her first? Me. Of course it's Dio. I was looking for Quark on floor B and couldn't find him. So I came back here and... Didn't... Didn't we start off by looking at the crew quarters? Right? Fine and myself? I think we started there. So it had to be amidst all of this searching madness that Alice was killed. Well, you know the rest. Hey, what's that look supposed to mean? Better not be thinking I did it. Well, suspicion often falls on the first to discover a crime. Screw that. She'd already been murdered when I got here. How do you know she was murdered? What? Come on, it's obvious. 
She's got a knife sticking out of her chest. Does that look like an accident or a suicide to you? How do you know the weapon was a knife? What? All you can see from here is the handle. For all you know, it could have been an ice pick or some kind of a tool. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. But I mean, come on, who wouldn't look at that and assume it's a knife? Yeah, as suspicious as Dio seems here, I, I don't think it's unfair to look at such a scenario and assume it's a knife. So, yes, I understand why Fi is pressing Dio now, and it could be, you know, feasible that Dio actually only knows this information because he was involved in the, the murder, right? I don't think it's that unreasonable for somebody who didn't do it to, to assume these things from just looking at Alice. And it's not fair to suspect someone just because they happen to be the first one to find the body. If you want to be like that, then the last person to see Alice is the person you should be looking at. Who is the last person to see her? I need to go tell Alice. Right, that's right, it was Clover. You guys go on ahead. Alice. Why? This wasn't supposed to happen. You promised we you promised me we'd catch them together. Interesting. Catching them together. What does that mean? They're searching after a certain set of people, right? Possibly the lady and the, the guy who were doing that sort of genetic engineering uh, research. Don't do this. Clover. I can't trust them anymore. It could have been any one of them. They killed you, Alice. I can't forgive them for that. <gasps> Are we going to get a Clover ending? Are we going to get a Clover ending? I love Clover endings. I'm going to get revenge. Oh, it's so the Clover ending. I'll find out who killed you, and I'll... I'll... <laughs> Sounding like Liam Neeson over here. I'm a person with a very certain... Or, what is it? <laughs> very With a par very particular set of skills. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in years. But that line, those lines always remind me. Anyways, hey, Clover. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Don't you talk to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alice. Her voice shook as she spoke. Before anyone could say anything, she turned and ran out of the room. <laughs> Yikes. So now... Well, I can understand why she wouldn't want to be with anybody in the room currently. Going off alone is clearly not a very safe thing to do at the moment. Wait! Clover, come back! Temyoji took off in pursuit, and I made to follow when... It's pointless. Even if you caught up to her, she'd never tell you anything. Think it through. There are two possibilities. Either Clover killed her, or she didn't. If the former is true, then I doubt she would confess. If the latter is true, then I imagine she'll be just as reticent. After all, Alice and Clover seem to know each other. In fact, they seemed quite close. It seems safe to assume that Clover is currently very suspicious of all of us. I doubt she would open up to anyone right now. You seem pretty calm. Did you do it? Not again. Well, if you really want to suspect me, please, go ahead. I'm beginning to feel rather accustomed to it. 
アリスさんを殺害する理由など一つもありませんよ I would ask you to consider my motive for killing Alice, specifically the fact that I have none. Well, yes, but none of us do. None of us have ever met Alice before, right? So why would we want to kill her? Well, do we really know that? And we're also dependent on each person telling us that they haven't met Alice before, so somebody could very easily lie about that. You are correct. But only if the murderer had a motive beyond, well, murder. What do you mean? Do you remember when we found the old woman? It seemed clear that her killer was Zero Senior, and that they were one of us. There is every reason to think the same person murdered Alice. Perhaps this person plans to kill us one by one. Perhaps the entire Nonary game is just window dressing. Perhaps the only reason we are here is so that Zero Senior can kill us at his leisure, in a world of his own creation. From our experience with 999, I don't think that's likely, but in this context, it is certainly a possibility, right? I'm sure a lot of people have heard of、uh, Batman, and more specifically, the villain from that universe, the Joker, right? The, the infamous line, some people just want to see the world burn, right? From the Dark Knight, and the Joker represents that. And from their perspective right now, they don't know if Zero Senior is somebody like that. It doesn't seem super likely given how intentional all of the puzzles have been and so, and so forth. The whole setup, it wouldn't seem likely to just do all of that work in order to kill some, you know, kill the people at his leisure. But it, you know, it's not out of the realm of feasibility. No, 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 no. Why would anyone do such a horrible thing? Presumably because they enjoy killing. Zero Senior seems to be rather disturbed. Hold on a minute. And that doesn't mean they're one of us. There could be a tenth person hiding out somewhere. No. Well, why not? There's no way Zero Junior would notice that. And if he did notice? I really don't think he'd just let something like that slide. But isn't Zero Junior just an AI without a body? What could he do? Oh, that's right. I also can't even believe I forgot. One of, the last, one of the most recent things we did was show that Dio actually killed that woman, right? To take her bracelet. Dio already is a murderer. Maybe, but Zero Senior has a body. Do you think they do you really or do you think they really just let a tenth unwanted participant just run around murdering people? Well, what if the tenth person is Zero Senior? Not possible. At least not so long as we assume Zero Junior's statement to be the truth. Do you remember? He made it quite clear that the real Zero was one of us. Did he? I bet. I thought about what Kay had said. If the killer was Zero Senior, then who could be the killer? Dio? Luna? Kay, perhaps? Given that Luna dies in one of the other timelines, it makes me think it's less likely it's Kay. Or maybe Clover? There was always Temyoji. Fi, maybe? No, it couldn't be her. I had been with Fi the whole time we were looking for Quark. There was no way she could have slipped away to stab Alice in the chest. Wait a minute. 
There was one person I'd forgotten. Yeah, Quark. It seemed like a bit of a stretch to think a kid could kill someone of Alice's size, though. I mean, with the right weapon, size doesn't really matter, right? That meant there were five real suspects. Dio, Luna, K, Clover, and Temyoji. Hmm. I don't think it's fair to exclude Quark. Where had Quark gone? Yeah, they haven't exactly figured that out yet. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline is passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Apparently, Zero doesn't feel like this is worth stopping the game for. A blunt but effective way to make the point. What do you mean? We should get to the warehouse. Yeah, I mean, essentially, this death is not so far without... far outside what Zero had foreseen for occurring within this game that, you know, it's not worth stopping it for, right? The fact that the game is continuing as planned means that this is something that was arguably expected by Zero Senior. And, um, well, they can use that to somewhat deduce what Zero's intentions might be. It seems clear he feels no compunction about killing us, should we disobey the rules. As such, I recommend we follow them. The others filed out of the room. <coughs> I turned to face Alice. Alice, I'll find out who did this to you. I promise. Also, probably want to take that bracelet. I felt my stomach settle back into its normal configuration and the fire on my chest melted the icy hand from my spine. I stood up straight, gave Alice one last nod and walked after the others, leaving my regrets lying on the cold floor. Whether that's intentional with regards to leaving the bracelet behind or not, if it is, I think that's incredibly clever. But yeah, they totally should have taken that one bracelet. Because that can prove incredibly useful, right? Hey, look, two of the AB gates are closed already. Probably Temyoji and Clover. Were they solos? Wasn't he a pair? Doesn't Quark need to go with him? As long as one person in each pair is there, it should be okay. Sharing their destiny, huh? Pretty much. That's good news for you, Sigma. After all, you're a pair, but your partner is... Well, I'd rather not say it. Yeah. I know. Good luck for you, huh, Luna? What? I don't understand what you mean. Well, if Alice was still alive, you'd have a hard time choosing Betray. She only had one BP left. If you'd picked Betray, you could have killed her. That's not really a problem now. Stop that, Dio. Yeah, Luna's like, we're not messing around about Alice right now. We don't joke around about our friends' deaths. I would have chosen ally regardless. I mean... Sigma's going to be my opponent. And I... I trust him. I, I just, like, know in the back of my head that Virtue's Last Reward is going to make, like, the ultimate punch in the gut and make Luna be zero. Like, I just know that's what's going to happen because every bit of me wants to trust Luna. And that's just, like, that's just how this game operates, right? They set you up just to take the hardest fall possible. And, um... 
<laughs> That's what I'm thinking is going on. Really? Oh. Oh. This is interesting. If one of you guys picks Betray, we are going to get a show. Dio? Ignore him. How do you and Fi plan to vote? Interesting. So, we know from the other timeline that K, if given the opportunity, is going to go for that 9, right? You even got to ask? Ally. Of course. Right, Fi? I don't know about that. It's a difficult question. What? Well, if we choose ally and K chooses the opposite, then we'll have nine points. He can go through the number nine door with whenever he wants. But it's not as simple as just choosing betray either. If K decides to ally for some reason, then you'd end up with nine points. So we should both choose ally. Seems easy to me. You're planning on betraying me, aren't you, Dio? I mean, I'm sure Dio is, right? It's Dio we're talking about. But at the same time, we know K probably is planning to do the same, right? As soon as you go through that door, it will be only the two of you in that room. I have no doubt you could overpower Fi if you had the desire to. Have you seen this girl's hops, though? Give me a little credit. No one has more gentle points than me. You think someone of my stature would resort to violence? The nerve. What? What? We already know you killed someone, Dio. Um, what? Luna's gonna be like, we only have two minutes. It's just a thought, but why don't all of you promise to choose Betray? Yeah, honestly, in this sort of a scenario, there's really high risk, high reward type scenario if any one of them chooses ally. The easiest thing to do is choose Betray, hope for different partners, where each of you can approach 9 without, you know, somebody actually reaching 9, and then everybody can choose ally at the same time to get through. Then you wouldn't have to worry about anything. If you knew the other person was going to betray you, you'd have no choice but to do the same. That seems pretty negative for you, Luna. It's surprising, but it's just logic. It's not necessarily negative. I'm sorry. Nothing to apologize for. We appreciate your suggestion, and we'll take it into consideration. But unfortunately, I don't think it's a very good idea. Is that because somebody else could reach nine points instead? See, my goal is to beat this game. But, fine. Maybe that wasn't the best way to put it. When I say I want to beat it, I mean defeat it completely. I want to get us all out of here. Which is interesting because we know there's a timeline in which she does exactly the opposite. Which I guess technically makes sense given the parallel universe theory where it's like for every decision, every potential outcome, there is a universe, right? We haven't beat the Nonary game until we're all out of this place. I guess we won't all be getting out anymore, though. Yeah, rip, rip Alice. Oh, you mean Alice. Yeah. 
At any rate, all of us choosing betray every time is hardly ideal. We never escape. Then what are you going to do? I mean, apparently we got plenty of food and water in the pantry. Hmm. K needs to choose ally. It's the only way. How will you make sure I do that? I have no guarantee that you'll choose ally as well. Would you do it if I could give you that guarantee? Well, yes, I suppose so. Don't trust him, Kay. Don't trust him. You promise? Yes. Good. Let's do this. Dio. Is she gonna like... For some reason, the first thing that came to mind was, like, play fetch with him. Like, throw a little frisbee and be like, Dio, fetch! And then run into the AB game room. <laughs> There's someone behind you. Oh my goodness, it is gonna be that simple. What? The moment Dio turned his head, Phi was off. With seemingly superhuman strength, she leapt through the air, across the room, and through the AB gate. I told you guys, have you seen this girl's hops? What the heck? You baka! Darn it, Fi! Open this door! He pounded on the door, screaming, but it showed no signs of opening again. Crap. He gave the door one last slam for good measure, then ran to the next open one. That's a rule breaking. Invalid pair detected. Please retry with valid partner. Have we seen this announcement before? I don't think we've seen this result. Members of a pair cannot vote in separate rooms. What? Why the heck not? This is against the rules! How am I supposed to vote? This crap. I see. This is how Fi can guarantee her choice. Dio can't vote now, so the chance that Fi will choose Ally just went way up. After all, if you pick Ally and she betrays you, then... Dio will have 9 points. Exactly. But don't you think Fai might be worried that Kay will break his promise? After all, if he can be pretty sure that Fai is going to choose Ally, then... Yeah, I mean, we've obviously learned to be quite concerned in this situation. You needn't worry. Her plan is very clever. I will definitely choose Ally. Hmm, I don't know about that. Two minutes remain until polling closes. We don't have much time left. Let's go. Right. Okay. Um, Sigma? Hmm? You, you are going to choose Ally, right? Heck yeah, we're going to choose Ally. You're Luna! Of course. We both have 5 BP right now. Even if I did betray you, I'd only get 3 points. That's not enough to escape. So I'd have to wait until the next round anyway. Make sense? Oh, I see. She's like, oh, I was hoping you'd say you trusted me. Huh? Oh, nothing. Never mind. You know, for all the time Sigma spends thinking about girls, he certainly doesn't have any understanding of how <laughs> to read their feelings. Anyway, you promised. You have to choose Ally. Right, I will.
All right, so here we are with the Ambidex game. We'll click start. There's not any real discourse to be had. We don't have Alice available as a partner. 30 seconds remain. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I guess there isn't really any question. After all, I promised Luna that I'd pick Ally. But what if she was lying to me? I would have chosen Ally regardless. I mean, Sigma's going to be my opponent. And I, I trust him. How precious. 10 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We pick Ally because Luna is precious. And we trust her. Kind of. There's like that little sliver in the back of my head that's like Luna's gonna screw me over. But for the most part, I trust her. So, round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gate's now opening. Oh, uh, Dio's gonna be pissed. Dio's not gonna be happy with Fi. <laughs> she better be ready to protect herself. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. However, that's a bit of a lie because they're actually going to be displayed in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was, again, a really fun episode. I'm glad to be back into recording and everything and getting familiar with the game again. I'm looking forward to what happens in this timeline. And again, of course, bouncing around. I, I'm i curious to see what's going on with Clover. That's what really has me captivated here is how is Clover going to react to Alice's death? And are we going to get another Clover ending like from 999? Because if so, that would be, oof, that would be, that would be wonderful. And I'm really curious to see what's going on with Quark in this timeline, as well as what Alice was kneeling over to find next to the AB rooms. I'm really not sure. And the game keeps interrupting as soon as we're about to find out. But anyways, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next one. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. Goodbye.